federal government needs to convey an emergency meeting concerning the issue of food insecurity in the country alongside with even insecurity itself. Good morning and welcome to the Daily's on Echo Television International. We'll be looking at a number of stories on the paper, how they affect you. You can be part of the conversation by dropping your comment on Facebook and on YouTube. I am Sarah Elisha Dashan, and I'll be doing the program with Rachel Tansy. Good morning, Rachel. Good morning, Sarah. Yeah. All right, let's take the first paper quickly. On Nigerian Tribune, Bajabia Mila Ribadu ministers meet say government will unlock food in shortage and storage facilities. You can find details on page four. And on economic hardship, PDP tackles APC over claims opposition behind protest. The big story on the paper, Nigerians spend $40 billion on foreign education, medical treatment in 10 years. This is coming from the CBN governor. The writer under the story says, spend $58.7 billion on travel allowances during same period. Annual import declined from $66.05 billion in 2024 to $54.7 billion in 2023. Forex from oil export declined from $93.89 billion in 2011 to $31.4 billion in 2020. Reps tackle minister CBN over economic downturn says Nigerians hungry and angry. You can find details on page 4. Amotekun arrests 149 suspected criminals in Ondo State and we are seeing that there is actually a need for state policing. Still on insecurity, Senate meets service chiefs today, postponed session with CBN governor to Friday. Renewed hope turning to desperation, Catholic bishop tells Tinubu. Rising poverty endangers Nigeria's existence coming from SMBLF, laments conflicting court judgment over reverse crisis. Kogi falls EFCC over charges against ex-governor Bello. You can find details on page three. And we are seeing a picture paper, a picture story on the paper saying or showing rather that queues are returning to the fell station. And then also the you know the speculation about increase on the fell pump price is actually beginning to kick in. And that's all the news on Nigerian Tribune. All right on this day newspaper. We have Cardoso Nigerians to spend $40 billion in 10 years on foreign education and medical tourism. Say spending worsened forex crisis attribute short-term volatility to arbitrage and speculation. It says Nigeria at a turning point as a result of the current reforms. And then we are having that the deputy speaker saying, our decision policies must address people's need. You can start reading that story on the front page and continue on page 10. Coming from the federal government, why some pharmaceutical firms left Nigeria, which we actually knew some of the reasons because of the economic hardship in the country, power, and need many other things for them to maintain their profits in the country. You can continue to read more detail of that reason on page 6 of this day newspaper. Coming from the president, Tinubu, he is saying no room for celebration until military and insecurity returns to Nigeria. With the writer here saying, urge security agency to step up game, seek change in mindset and strategy tactics. Induce two NFA helicopters and aircraft and then Senate to grill the service chiefs today. You can find more detail on page 10. And the big story, federal government conveys emergency meeting to address the rising food prices with the writer here saying insists no food shortage in the country. Accuses opposition of using high cost of food, narrow depreciation to cause crisis. Urges millers and major traders to make their reserve available. Tinubu direct committee to take immediate steps to address the situation. Lawmakers tell stakeholders to open the National Food Reserve, exploit grain importation and others. APC PDP trade blame over the protests in Kano and Niger State. And I, some of the reasons coming from the federal government, Richard, I mean, concerning this big story, especially accusing the opposition party to actually using the high cost of food. I think I've said this, and I'll just keep repeating myself because, I mean, there's no, there no point I'll get tired or I just have to keep saying it. The fact that, you know what, whatever the opposition party is saying, I've said it, it's for you to use it. Just like you already mentioned yesterday, is it true that 
people are suffering from the issue of food is not available, food is very high. It is true. So what are you planning to do about this? Here we're saying that, I mean, the choice right now is even to open more doors for importation again. And you remember, we're still looking at the issue of Nigeria being a dumping ground for almost mm -hmm. everything. You made mention of the time that was the time we had rice that were robbers. And then uh, just imagine the hazard that that would cause to Nigeria. So, I mean, talking about the issue of emergence, I mean, ha them having a meeting concerned that I think it really, really calls for a it serious is. state of emergency. Because the hike in food prices, richer right now, just like we already mentioned, we only have the rich and the poor in Nigeria. Yeah. So I just hope that the government, beyond always pointing and accusing fingers and saying the opposition party is doing this, the opposition party is doing that, why don't you, you know, use that same energy to see what you can do? Let us make sure there is security. Farmers, let them get back to the farmland so that we can able to have food. I think um, there was one of the issues that the governor of Niger State addressed, which is the fact that we are having... Um, a lot of traders hoarding food prices, waiting for a time where the price mm -hmm. can get high. Yeah. And that's any, And I think this is really another thing that the government needs to also address because we know of people who actually hoard the food. And then we also saw where he banned and said no more selling of food to outsiders yeah. because if you don't have food in the state, why sending it outside? So I think this should be another, you know, very... Um, good steps that the government can actually take to actually address this issue of food insecurity in the country. You know, Sally, one of the writers that got me worried is the fact that they're saying insist no food shortage mm. in country. Now, this is where we'll keep hammering on the fact that if you don't call a thing as it is, that is where we see our government changing the narrative to please or just, I mean, just playing with words. This is playing with words and just twisting it. Now, food shortage is not a problem in Nigeria. What we are facing is food insecurity. It's not food shortage. As it is now, there's no food shortage. What we are having is food insecurity. Now, food insecurity is the reason we are seeing people hoarding food also to be able to hike it later. Food insecurity is the fact that there is food in the market but there are no people to buy it because of the cost of living, the, cons the increase yeah. in the price and all of that. So nobody is saying that there is shortage. When you go to the market, there is food. There's food everywhere looking at you. We are not saying that there's food shortage in the country. And I'm yet to see where anybody has said there's food shortage. What we are facing in general is food insecurity. It's food insecurity. It goes as far uh, beyond where we talk about the dumping of things in this country. It goes as far as, do you know that there are all of these um, food, um, these beverages or these, um, so these carbonated drinks we take, that some are fake. This is all food insecurity. Why? Because there are no regulations around these things. People are because of the hardship in the country, are going through the wrong means to sell poisonous things to people and people consuming. So what is existing in Nigeria is not food shortage. It's food insecurity. And it cuts across every other thing. And then we will, if food insecurity is not tackled, it also co it comes with the fact mm. with insecurity in general. And what food insecurity does is that one of it, the, the latter result of it is the food shortage. But as it is now, we're not struggling with food shortage. But then food insecurity is the problem in the country. And I just hope to see when the government is talking about what is happening in the country, say it as it is. Call the problem what it is. Don't try to twist word, play with words. I mean, just have a word salad to just make no, the narrative make egg, as if exactly no as if okay we nigerians are saying this that this is not the problem no this is not what we are saying you know what the problem is handle it and then stop trying to make it look like nigerians have no mm. reason whatsoever to lament the opposition parties to are nigerians why do we make it why why is the federal government coming out and sounding like they're just strangers in nigeria talking they are also Nigerians, so it means they are also facing the hardship, the high cost of living and everything. So for once, can they just talk as Nigerians without the federal government coming at them and still playing politics with the economy and with the situation of the country?
you know, Richard, it's quite sad, just like you mentioned, the fact that Native look as if it's a strangers or they are strangers actually commending on this issue. But we hope to see a different body language coming from the government. We have a picture story here where we have partnership for a better life expectancy. You can find more detail of that where we can see representative of the UNICEF together with the Quara State Governor Abdul Razad um, during a visit to the government house in Ilori yesterday. And that's all on this day newspaper. On Blueprint newspaper, INEC issues certificate of return to three senators, 15 reps, orders today. Ex-Governor Bello didn't steal our money, KGSG tells EFCC. Access Bank signs loan agreement with GICR on climate change. You can find details on page 19. Super Eagle I Bafana's cap as a CMAR returns. The big story on the paper, foreign education, medical tourism, killing Naira. A statement coming from Cardoso says Nigerians spend $40 billion in education, healthcare abroad in 10 years. Economic hardship being addressed. Edu Bagudu Adedeji tells Rev. You can start with the details on the front page. Tinibu returns as federal government unlocks storage facilities to arrest food scarcity. 149 suspected criminals arrested in Ondo by Omoteko. You can find details on page 10. NCC urges state to court telecom taxes. You can find details on page 12. Step up fight against insecurity. Tinubu charges military. And at the downside of the uh, paper, power outage. Our husbands no longer touch us over heat. I mean, this is coming from Rivers Women in Complain, and I wonder how it made its way to the paper. But you can find details of that story on page 6, and that's all the news on Blueprint newspaper. On New Telegraph newspaper, we have banks, credit to government up 36.5% to 9.01 trillion Naira. You can find details of that story in the paper. Naira closes weak on the official market, crashes to 1,433.89 Kobo per dollar. You can find details of that on page 25. See the New Telegraph newspaper by Yelsa to the federal government. Clear your outstanding 13% derivation debt. Detail of that found on page 30. And on the 21 billion era money laundering, judge throws out charge against the former chief of air staff, Amosu. You can find that on the, story, on the front page of the paper. And on oil theft, again, Titanic arrest vessel in by Yelsa. You can find more of that story in the paper. Federal government to enforce hospital compliance to law on gunshot victims. And I think they really need to um, check some of these um, like say, um, rules that they actually said concerning not just gunshot victims, but I mean, we've had issues whereby you take a, a patient to the hospital, maybe for an injury or an accident, and then we keep hearing them say you need to have a police report before they actually um, address such issues. And I think that this is something they also have to have a review on, on many other rules that they have said concerning um, you know, dealing or actually treating patients that are coming mm -hmm. with gunshots, accident, or whatsoever. So we keep our fingers crossed to see more of that and our viewers can actually get the paper and read that on page 29 of the New Telegraph newspaper. See the New Telegraph, we have the big story here that says Forex volatility may drive fuel pump price to over 800 Naira. Cues caused by distribution issues coming from the NNPC Limited. Cardoso blame Naira decline on Forex speculation, non-remittance of crude oil earning and others. Predict 3.76% GDP growth in 2024. You can follow up that story on page 2 and 7. INEC holds suspended Taraba Enugu by election February 14th, which is next week, Wednesday. Trump doesn't have presidential immunity. U.S. court rules. You can find that on page 4. Kogi government raises the alarm over alleged plot to frame, um, to frame the ex-governor Yahaya Bello. Kogi government raises the alarm over alleged plot to frame the ex-governor Yahaya Bello, Dita Fan on page 2. Sawolu set up viewing centers at Okuruku for super eagles 
Bafana Bafana match. It's really a serious match. It will be taking place today by 6 p.m. So a lot of Nigerians are keeping their fingers crossed. We're seeing even the governor of Lagos State is taking that upon himself to set up the viewing center. I mean, this will really tell a lot. It's quite a number of stories and pictures coming out on social media. And it's more like a lot of people are trying to, will I say, revenge back. Because I think I saw a picture where we saw Super Eagles. And then, not Super Eagles, rather, the... Um, um, South African players, and then it was a cartoon, and then we saw the Super Eagles being roasted. Mm -hmm. So that is to say that they're already planning for us. Yeah. But I believe that, um, however, this match turned out, this is the only thing that keeps Nigerians together. I mean, regardless yeah. of our religion, regardless of our political views, our political party, I think this is one thing that keeps Nigeria together. And I just hope, I keep trusting that this match will go out. Co play out well play eventually, out. Rachel. I mean, this African Cup of Nations turned out to be very surprising. The teams that have moved forward, mm. we saw our best losers, Cote d'Ivoire, still in the race and all of that. I'm just hoping, um, truth be told, um, Super Eagles should be the best team now. And I'm looking forward to them mm. proving that they deserve to be tagged as the strongest team mm. in the in, in in the in the race so as as it is now so i'm just looking forward to them um going with um with humility and at the same time with rage you know go don't go feeling you've already arrived arrived mm. that's where the whole humility thing go there with the fact that you know what anything can mm. happen but we're here like we are we are out for you guys and then hopefully we've had a good track record against Bafana Bafana and I'm just hoping to just see history repeating itself. Not like it can't change. It, it can change but let us make sure that it doesn't change. Yeah. It will not change because initially <laughs> yes. we were a little bit scared when we saw that Oshima would not be there because of that abdominal pain yeah. he was having. But I mean, she, yeah, she actually made it. He will still be there. She so made it. I mean, yesterday she was there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah she we made it. She plays the full true, hours. True, like, true, yeah, true. So we, we wish them all the best. Yes. We're still on New Telegraph newspaper. We have other stories here where we are seeing Tunibutu Security Agency in testify effort at steaming multidimensional insecurity. You can read that story on page two and three. And hardship starvation, opposition parties behind the protest. This is coming from the APC. You can find more detail of why they said that inside the paper. And we also have a study that link um, flame retiree chemicals to preterm birth. You can find what that means and how that can affect any one of us. You can find more detail of that on page 28. We have a picture story on the front page of the paper. You can do out to grab the paper in more detail of any of the story that is of interest to you. On the Punch newspaper, Tinibu returns orders emergency meeting on food crisis. Narrow weekends at official market banks sell $584 million. IOCs withhold fresh investment over $1.3 billion debt. The big story on the paper, Nigerians spend $98 billion on foreign trips, education in 10 years. This is coming from the Central Bank of Nigeria. CBN says it can stabilize exchange rate alone, puts annual food imports at $15 billion. Senate Sumon Cardoso grilled CBN Governor Friday over forex crisis and economic challenges. Federal government vows to end insecurity as NAF unveils attack helicopters. Customs seized 854 million naira vehicles and orders in January. Killers, kidnappers, free slain Quara Monarch's wife and 13 suspects nap. Dangote would list refinery fertilizer companies. This is coming from the NGX group chair. You can find details on page 21 and that's all the news on the Punch newspaper. On Nigerian News Direct, Labour Party, the PDP knocked Tinubu as rising food prices for straight Nigerians. And on the equity abduction, Tinubu on phone with me every day till abducted pupils were released. Oyebanje tells Afeni Ferry leaders, you can find details of that on page 3. NGX All Share Index extend loses by 1.52%, you can find that on page 10. And on the issue of insecurity, Senate Summon Service Chiefs as Tinubu induct two combat helicopters. You can find detail of that on page two. 
The big story, Forex chal um, challenges worsen by $40 billion spent on foreign education and medical tourism, coming from the CBN governor. BDC to undergo overrun as Cardoso target currency hoarders, says CBN bull reform leads to $800 million in Forex transaction data found on page 9. We have two pictures story on the front page of the paper. You can do well to grab the paper in more detail of any of the story that is of interest to you. On the Matrix newspaper, World Bank says inflation in food prices remains high globally. And on Afcon, she may cleared by doctors' travels to Boca for South Africa. Clash, you can find details on page 18. State of the Nation APC PDP trade tackles. APC blames opposition parties for instigating masses into protests. PDP fires back, says APC insensitive. Relation life decounting situation in the country. The big story on the paper, Tinibu's men raise Nigerians hope. The writers say Nigeria's economy in much better state than when Tinibu took over. This is a statement from the Minister of Finance, Edun, and I would really appreciate if he explains how it is much better. We are having a foil pump price that is higher, to, uh, over 200% higher than when. Well. Yes, we are having a free fall of the Naira We've never seen it that bad before. You floated the currency. And I mean, I mean, I, I don't know in what areas. Insecurity mm. is just at, at its peak. We're just having kidnappers chilling. So just that changing is the word. The face because oh. they just like you said, he yeah. needs to come out to explain further. Because, I mean, this, 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 um, this review should be coming from Nigerians, not and just not from an individual. Exactly. Because we need even, or even a, a body to come out to give up some of the you know, modalities or, what, exactly. or some of the factors. What did you use to actually measure yeah, it? Well, the fact that it's yeah. better or it's exactly. worse? Exactly. So, I mean, there, there are details on page two. So, mm. you can just get the Matrix newspaper and get other details. And then... Mm. Some of the writers are saying with Tinibu's policies, there will soon be an improvement. Okay, this is the CBN um, governor assuring Nigerians Tinibu's government working to address hiking cost of living coming from Bagudu. Nigerians working hard to increase revenue base coming from the FIRS boss. Tinibu directs provision of food intervention to curb shortage. 50% imported pharmaceutical products in nigeria fake this is coming from navdac and we look deeper into this yesterday npc rules out birth certificate issuance to person older than 18. you can find details on page three so for those of you that are still thinking of going to reduce your age it might not be possible i was set up lizzie angerin speaks on tev allegation worsening insecurity senate to greet security chiefs today and tomorrow Ex-Minister Hadi Sirika's brother arrested in 8 billion naira aviation fund probe. You can start with the details on the front page. We have a picture story showing the president returns, and that's all the news on the Matrix newspaper. On daily independent newspaper, Tinibu asks military and security agency to end insecurity. Also, we are having oil will be first to achieve electricity efficiency, says Mackenday. You can find detail of that story in the paper. And the big story, APC, Labour Party, PDP, Pika, over protests on high cost of living. The APC accuses opposition of plotting to subvert Tinibu's government. Mina protest was about hunger, not political parties coming from the Labour Party. Tinibu has turned economic upside down in nine months coming from the PDP. Warned the APC not to politicize protests by Nigerians against hardship. Bajabi Amida Ribadu Kadosu ministers meet over the high cost of living. You can find that on page 29. To increase household income, African Development Bank disburses $540 million to states, detail found on page 7. Also, we're having Nigeria restates flight suspension with Niger spells out exemption. Kogi government raises the alarm over plan to tarnish the ex-governor Bellu's image. And on the 21 billion naira money laundry court squashes charge against the former chief of air staff. 
And we also have a story here that uh, we have on most of the paper talking about Nigeria spent $40 billion on foreign education and medical tourism in 10 years, coming from the CBN governor, where we're having a rider on that, that story that's saying the FRS target 19.2 trillion naira revenue for 2024. Downside of the paper, court renews over restraining police, uh, police from arresting Rivers' chief of staff. Court renews order restraining police from arresting Rivers' chief of staff. You can find out on P6. And that's all on daily independent newspaper. On First News newspaper, on economy, Buhari's minister, Timmy Prey Silva, slams Tinubu. Abiodun releases additional 1 billion naira for Ogun pensioners' gratuity. Fresh tension grieves Benway as gunmen kill 17. Tinibu returns to Abuja after private visit to Pari, and we have slain Kwara monarchs, abducted, wife released, police arrest 13. And on Japa, we issued 2.1 million passports in 2023. Um, this is coming from NIS, and I mean 2.1 million passports, that's like 2% of the Nigerian population. However, it's not all of these 2.1 a million people that eventually got a visa. So we're still looking at this 1% of Nigerian out looking at our population. And it, it still tells us that regardless of the Japa syndrome, 99% of Nigerians are still, still in Nigeria, home. still at home, and feeling the blow of the hardship and everything. And, I, and we keep saying it's because more of it took place in the medical, in the health sector, mm -hmm. and that is why it's, it, it's being felt and it's obvious. But we're still here, Sele, and we will keep asking the government to do better. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people are still here. Few are moving out, but majority of Nigerians are still in Nigeria and are demanding the best from the government. Osime fit for South Africa clash. The big story on the paper, food crisis, Tunipo orders special committees, swift intervention. As federal government accuses saboteur of escalating prices of foodstuffs, announces plans to release food items from national food reserves to boost availability, moves to work with major millers and commodity traders on easing food prices. Solution ahead to cost of living crisis, says CBN Minister. I'm just hoping that we will not get to the point where we also have food subsidy. I'm just hoping not. This that shouldn't be the situation in Nigeria. Still on the first news newspaper, sending to grill service chiefs today as lawmakers summon Tunibu's economic team. President challenges military to end multidimensional insecurity. Rivers cause extend order barring police from arresting Fubara COS. Trump not immune from election subversion charges, U.S. court rules. And on inflation rate, it's saying uh, we have a report that it will drop to 21% in 2024. Cardoso promises Nigerian says $40 billion demand for medical treatment foreign education bigger than our total reserve and that's all the news on first news newspaper all right before we continue further with other people review we'll love to take a break at this moment quite a lot of stories for us to chew looking at the president is finally back into the country and we're seeing that on getting back on the country he's actually trying to have one meeting after the other setting up committees to look into the issue of food insecurity and also on even insecurity itself so we hope to hear what your own views are you can drop it on facebook and on youtube so when we come back from the break we will continue with the paper analysis please stay tuned with us Make your everyday informative, make your everyday count. Know your world, daily affairs, national and international with authentic news events as they unfold on Global News and Zuma Nigeria, Monday to Friday at 1 p.m.
Thank you for staying tuned. We're still looking at various stories and the program is the dailies where we have seen that the president is back in the country. He's also, we're saying that today, Senate will be talking with the service chief on the issue of the insecurity in the country, what they are doing about that. So quite a number of stories on the paper. We'd love to hear your own views. So remember, you can be part of the conversation by dropping your comment on Facebook and on YouTube as well. I still have Rachel Tenzi with me. Thank you, Rachel. You're welcome, for this. All right, let's take a look at the next paper, which is the Nation newspaper. Nigerians spend $40 billion on foreign education and health care. Detail of that can be found inside the paper. And on T12, TKTECAT helicopters joined the battle against insecurity. Ladi Adebutu orders charged with money laundering. Kogi money not missing, state government tells the EFCC. You can find detail on page 2 and 4 for both stories. An APC opposition throw brick bet over Mina Kano protests. APC opposition throws brick bats over Mina and Kano protests. You can find that inside the paper. No petrol supply issue, says the NNPCL and then Tinubu back from Paris. The big story on the paper coming from the federal government. Our economy um, policies yielding fruits. Ed is saying we are improving the living standard. Bagudu is explaining the revenue target and then how we are bringing that inflation coming from the CBN governor, more palliative for vulnerable Nigerians. Now we have two caption of um, stories here where we're seeing as of yesterday, the volume of transaction in our market was over $844 million. And then we're seeing that these measures should stimulate growth, foster innovation, and uplift the lives of every Nigerian. Well, we hope that this palliative that will be released. We get to every Nigerian in this country because no, and no, no Nigerian is more Nigerian than the other. And that has been the situation so far. Here we are still seeing that government to release food items from the reserve to crash prices. Tinibu special panel to swing into action. You can find more detail of that inside the paper. The outside of the paper, we have Alake in Africa's mining minister's chair. And then here we are having... Amote Ku arrest 149 in Edo State. Detail of that can be found on page 5, and that's all on the Nation newspaper. On Vanguard newspaper, petrol queues emerge in Lagos and environs. Stabilizing Nara tax for all Nigerians, says the um, CBN governor, says Nigerians spend $40 billion on school medical tourism in 10 years, and you can find details on page 5. And there is a sports column on page 29. It's going to be very tough against Nigeria coming from Tove. You can find details inside the paper. And the big story, protests over high prices, no food shortage in Nigeria. A statement coming from the federal government. Plead with, with Miller's major commodity traders to make available what's in their stores. President directs committee to take immediate action to arrest situation. Tinibu returns from France. You can find details on page 4. And on kidnapping, police nap suspected octogenarian kingpin over Ekiti and Kwara killings. You can find details on page 6. Labor protests at Nadak over ban on alcoholic beverages in Sachet. And I wonder why Labor is protesting. These things are poisonous. There's no regulation. You can find details on page 7. And on insecurity, Tinibu orders security agencies to curb criminal activities. Koki tackles EFCC over 80 billion naira fraud charges against ex-governor Bello. You can find details on page 4. And we have a column by Afe Babalola on page 22. And on Edo Guba, respect zoning principle Obaseki of Shemele told. You can find details on page 21. And we have a picture story showing an impounded vessel. This is by the Tantita Security. And that's all the news on Vanguard newspaper. On the Guardian newspaper, inflation price hike push an egg a day diet beyond Nigerians' reach. Here we're trying to see the price, how it has increased from 25% to about 30% and then seeing the fact that, I mean, the average egg cost is about 150 naira each. There was a time that egg was 50 naira. There was a time that two was 50. There was a time that the egg was, I think the last time was 17 naira per egg. Right now I think that 150. 
And you remember when, um, I think it was the last year or beginning of the year, where we saw some of the statistics that came out talking about what children are missing on their everyday diet. And we know it's in stunted growth, very true, Rachel, and the fact that there is a need for protein. But right now, if we are seeing that even the egg that's is available, but it's not reachable yeah. to Nigerians. And we're seeing that even the milk, I mean, how many people can afford the milk? Not to talk about fish, not to talk about meat. And so right now, a lot of people who are supposed to resort to plant protein. But tell me, how much is the measure of beans in the market presently? So Nigerians cannot even afford it. So really, I think this really calls for an emergency. And I hope that uh, the committee that have been said will really, really look into this. Because the way things are going in this country, Rachel, it makes you look as if when you wake up tomorrow, rapture is taking place. Yeah. But I'm just hoping that uh, things will get back to normal. I'll see you very soon in the country. We just, we just hope so mm. that as the government is opening their reserve, it really does help. Because a lot of time, even when something that looks should be significant in helping a situation, it always turns out to be a flop for some reason. Mm. I just hope this one is different. Because um, just as we, we saw how stunted growth is normal, yes, you literally see a 10 year old and think he's six or seven. That's how bad it is because the eggs are there and the poultry farmers have no option than to sell it that way because what are the cost of um, the, the, um, the, 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 the feed? And the people making the feed are telling you that maize is expensive and it's true. They're not just saying it because we also consume the maize in our houses. So what makes us feel that there's their lamenting is mm. different from ours. So it's, it's just the same thing. And then you find out that eggs, that should be an option if there's no meat protein. And then now, and then just as you said, even for the plant-based protein, how much are we looking at it? And how can families consistently have these things in their diet? And it's not supposed to be a once in a week kind of thing for True. children. It's supposed to be daily, even for adults. It's not just, okay, Let's eat protein Wednesday till next week Monday. It's supposed to be all through the week, every single day. I just hope that the measures that the, the government is trying to take, that we, we see it and we feel see it. It, it shouldn't just come and pass as if nothing mm. ha has taken place or happened. Let's feel the impact that we might see certain um, um, goods going down in the market. Well, we look forward to seeing those regulations being set by the government. Still on the Guardian newspaper, regional groups hate goals on hardship and failure of democracy. Dieter Fan on page 3. Bishops and Northern Elders lament the rising inflation, hardship, and insecurity. Apartheid denies being or basically more distant self from Edo Labour Party Secretariat violence. You can find more inside the paper. And on the Naira free fall, CBN blames the rising number of Nigerians schooling abroad and medical tourism. Data found on page 6. Nigeria, Burkina Faso, four others to experience food crisis till May 2024. You can find more detail of other countries that will be affected as well. NNPCL spends 267.98 billion Naira on security as oil operators struggle. Lagos, TUC, and others protest ban on such an alcohol site potential 5,000 job loss. Well, we hope that something will be done better. This was supposed to actually help because the number of psychiatric patients we are having, the number of drug abuse we are having, the number of people who are alcoholic that we are having, there is a need to ban this. Of course, we know some people will lose their job eventually. But then I think this should be a time where we'll see, even though, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a sad reality that the Bebel's company have actually created a lot of job and revenue for Nigeria. But I think there's a better way for the government to actually approach this and then do something better because we're seeing that the risk is higher than the demand eventually. So I just yes. hope that um, something better will be done. I know that Labour is not happy that's talking about the trade union, mm -hmm. but then I hope that they look into something better that can be done and then how can these people be ejected back into the economy and then get jobs because I know the concern right now is that these people will be losing their jobs eventually. So uh, the problem is that in the first place, we're not even supposed to be having such products in our market before we even get to the point of it creating over 500,000 jobs and then being a threat to the livelihood of some people. There are certain products that shouldn't even be consumed or available in the first place. So it, it shouldn't have even been found 
in the first place. And this shows us how if we want a better country, we have to be a hundred steps ahead in everything we do. NAVDAC is talking about this sachet. It's not a ban on alcoholic uh, um, beverages. It's not. It's this sachet in specific. It's just taking one product out of the thousand other alcoholic products and yet TUC is coming and talking. And then you wonder, do we even want to go in this country consumption-wise, health-wise? I'm not saying somebody's job is not threatened, but in the first place, we were not even supposed to have this such as product in the first place. You understand? You don't, they're not regulated. They just come under the umbrella of, it's just like how we saw pharmaceuticals bringing in product when they just have certificates for one product of but then under the umbrella they bring in other ones and you don't know the dangers this is the same thing when it comes to uh, the alcoholic beverage beverages we have in this country and this subject one in specific and now that is trying to take this one out and then the failure for me is unfortunate was the fact that it was even are permitted in the first exactly. place. Exactly. That is where the problem starts. And then now it's unfortunate that it will have to lead to people losing their jobs. And But I believe that um, for NAFDAQ is something that should be done. I'm not sitting from a place because I'm not selling it or it's not my job at stake. But we are looking at a wealthy country. And, and we, 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 we are having more touts out there consuming mm -hmm. all of these things and who, um, criminals that live on these things and operate on these things. And if you want a better Nigeria, there has to be some kind of cleaning. What we need is, is better jobs out there for people. I'm not saying that people not have livelihood from selling things like that, but this product in specific shouldn't even be in our market in the first place. Maybe they should resolve to make it such a juice, turn into such a, so that those people exactly. still remain still in jobs. Job. Well, that's on a lighter note. Well, the last story on the guiding newspaper, we have M-O-U-A-U shut down orders immediate vacation of students from campus. You can find that on page 7, and that's all on the Guardian newspaper. On Daily Sun newspaper, cost of living, fresh palliatives coming. This is an assurance from the federal government. CBN ministers, FIRS pledge to address hardship. The big story, FX crisis, CBN blames foreign students and medical tourism. Apex Bank's governor says $40 billion spent on school fees, medicals abroad in 10 years. And on food crisis protests, Tinibu APC politicizing hardship coming from PDP. It's time to hit the street coming from Oshun CSOs. You can find it on page 26. Kogi tackles EFCC over probe of ex-governor Yahya Bello. TUC FOBTOB protests closure of alcoholic such as drink factories by NAFTAC. You can find details on page 28. Tinibu lacks understanding of own economic reforms. A statement from Atiku. Fuel Q return in Lagos. NNPCL blames distribution hitch. Marketer says there's shortage in supply. Federal government APC link protests in Niger and Kano to opposition. Apprehension as Hundreds of gunmen surround Niger communities. Three killed, 65 abducted, uh, villagers flee in droves. You can find details on page 4. At the downside of the paper, UBA appoints Mary Mulili Mohammed al Haji and Samaru as MD and CEO in Kenya and Sierra Leone. You can find details on page 29. And that's all the news on Daily Sun newspaper. All right, let's take a look at what the Sweet Crew Report have for us, where we have Nigeria capital importation into oil sector dips by 61% to $1.6 million. Nigeria loses 891 billion naira to gas flaring in 2023. I hope that will not repeat itself this year, that, but we'll utilize all of these eventually. Nigeria to offer investors 75% stake in proposed solid minerals firm. And we're having the first LNG power vessel arrive Lekki Port with 14,000 containers. We can find detail of that inside the paper, and that's all on the Sweet Crook Report. On Nature News newspaper, African Development Bank pledges $540 million for special agro-industrial processing zones in Nigeria. GEF approves $960 million 
for urgent environmental actions. You can find details on page four. And we have the Niger Government Plans Committee to oversee inland waterway safety. The big story, state governors rally to avert impending food crisis in Nigeria. Ask CBN to transfer Anchor Borrowers Fund to Agri Ministry. You can find details on page three. FEMA launches dry season sensitization campaign in Abuja local government area. We have a nature care column that says Maca roots and amazing health benefits. You can find details on page 15. Producers, workers protest ban of sachet alcoholic drinks. And we have Queens Park Estate residents bemoans deteriorating living environment. Kenya to receive $11 billion for transition to clean energy. This is from CIF. You can find details on page 16, on page 6 rather. And at the downside of the paper, Life Golf Dramatic Week, a turning point. You can find details on page 21 and that's all the news on Nature News newspaper. All right, let's close it up with the Business Day newspaper. Caduso Forex Reform Deliver Record, $844 million single day trade. Data found in the paper. And we have Nigeria struggles to close $7 million 7 million metering gap subsidy back as Naira slides fear petrol price. And the last story on the paper, Nigerians 5G subscription jump eightfold in six months. You can find details of that story inside the paper. And that's all on Business Day newspaper and also how far we can go on the program this morning. Thank you, Rachel, for always awesome. doing this with me. And thank you to our viewers and supporters for keeping the date readers on the dailies. Until we come your way tomorrow, do have a blessed Wednesday.